Raptor is a visual programming environment based on flowcharts. This video will demonstrate using array variables to store a large number of individual values. This program from a previous video uses a loop to read all values from an input file and calculate the average. When the program completes, the watch window shows the variables that were used. At the end of the program, the score variable contains only the last individual value read during the execution of the program. Calculating the average of a set of values only requires viewing each individual value once so it can be counted and added to the sum. Other useful information about a set of data requires examining each individual value more than once. For example, showing all the values that were below average requires processing each value once to calculate the average and then processing each value again to determine if it was below the average. Similarly, showing all values within five points of the high score requires first processing each value to determine the high score and then processing each value again to determine if it was within five points of the high score. Running this program shows the results in the master console window and the variables used in the watch window. The interesting variable is called scores. Clicking the plus sign next to it reveals 10 individual values. This type of variable is called an array. It uses one variable name and an associated index to store multiple values. The notation for accessing individual values in an array is to write the name of the array and then the index value inside square brackets. In this case, writing scores with the number 6 in brackets refers to the value 98. The real power of arrays comes from the ability to use a variable inside the square brackets. The purpose of the load data subchart is to read the values from the data file and place them in the scores array. This is done with a loop and a variable named index which is initialized to 1. Inside the loop, instead of referring to the single variable named score, we now refer to the array variable and add the index variable enclosed in square brackets. Each time a value is read, the index variable is incremented so the next time around the loop a new location in the array will be used. Let's run the program again and take a closer look at these variables as the program executes. Before doing this, breakpoints are added to each of the procedure calls in the main program. A breakpoint causes Raptor to pause execution which will allow us to examine the variables in the watch window. On the load data subchart, when the first value is read from the data file, index is equal to 1, so the scores array is created with one value in it. Expanding the array variable in the watch window shows the array with one value. The index variable is then incremented so the next time around the loop, the second location of the array will be filled. Notice in the watch window the array size is increased and the new value is added. This continues until all values are read resulting in 10 distinct locations in the array with 10 distinct values. The calculate average subchart uses the same index variable and a very similar loop. The loop condition is different because the program has already filled the array, so now we need to loop once for each value in the array. The number of values in an array is often referred to as the length of an array. Raptor has a built-in function that can determine this value, which is compared to the index variable in the loop condition. The result is that the loop iterates once for each item in the array, adding them to the sum. After the loop, the average of all the values in the array can be calculated. The show below average subchart uses the exact same index variable and loop condition. This time, instead of adding each individual value in the scores array to the sum, there is a selection statement that compares each value to the average, displaying it if it is below the average. The find high score subchart again uses the exact same index variable and loop condition. The starting value for high score is taken from the first location in the array, and then the loop compares each individual item in the array to the current value stored in high score, changing it if it finds a larger value. Last is the count high scores subchart. As you may have guessed, this also uses the exact same index variable and loop condition. In fact, any time a program needs to process all of the values in an array in some manner, these three symbols are used. Initializing the index variable to 1, comparing the index variable to the length of the array, and incrementing the index variable. The only difference is exactly what happens between testing the loop condition and incrementing the index variable.
The examples in this program have added each value in the array to a sum, compared each value in the array to the average, displaying those below average, compared each value in the array to a high score, changing the high score if necessary, and now comparing each value in the array to the high score, counting the values within five points of the high score. The load data subchart used the same index variable, setting it to 1 before the loop and incrementing it inside the loop. However, the loop condition was different because the array had not yet been filled. The array in this example only held 10 values, but an array can be used to hold hundreds or even thousands of individual values while still only needing one variable name for the array and one index variable to loop through each individual value. This is the end of this video. You should now be able to use arrays in your programs.